15, verse 16, and I, Jesus, will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Jesus, Father, and Holy Spirit. Same verse. Verse 26 of 14, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Trinley, same verse. Uh, 1526, but when the helper comes, Holy Spirit, whom I, Jesus, shall send to you from the Father. Here's another one, Luke 3, 22. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him, that's Jesus, and a voice came from heaven which said, you're my beloved son, in you I'm well pleased. That's the Father. And just one more, go therefore, Matthew 28, 19, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name, in the name, in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is God. Uh, look at these two verses. Acts 5, verse 3. Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? That's Acts 5, 3. Look at verse 4. You have not lied to men, but to God. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the, you say, well, why are you, I know the Holy Spirit's God. Why, why are you harping on this? Because you still might have a little bit of a misperception because of your upbringing. Because let me tell you, the, when I went to Bible college, my pastor gave me one sentence of advice. Now, this is what he told me. He didn't tell me, work hard, study hard, listen to your professors, nothing like that. Here's, here's what my pastor said to me. Listen, here's what he said. Watch out for people who talk about the Holy Spirit. That was the only advice that I got from my pastor about Bible college, watch out for people who talk about the Holy Spirit. Now, let me just ask you a question. Is the Holy Spirit God? Yes. Then listen to what he said to me. Now, y'all just want you to think about this. Here's what my pastor said to me. Watch out for people who talk about God. That's what he said. Do you see how screwed up that is? <laughs> He warned me about people who talked about God. Can I tell you something? That offends me. It offends me that we talk about and think about the Holy Spirit that way. And I want you to understand it's the devil that caused us to act that way toward the Holy Spirit. Let me read you something, a little something I wrote about the Holy Spirit. All of these are scriptures. Some of them are two scriptures. Each sentence might, has a scripture to back it up. Some sentences have many scriptures to back it up. Let me just read it to you so you can understand how valuable the Holy Spirit is and how much at work he is. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us and through us on earth. The Holy Spirit calls and qualifies every minister for the work of the ministry. The Holy Spirit hears, speaks, teaches and guides us into all truth. The Holy Spirit glorifies Christ, reveals Christ to us, and brings all of Christ's words to our remembrance. The Holy Spirit shows us things to come, knows the deep things of God, searches all things, and reveals all things. Where the Holy Spirit is, there is liberty. The writers of the Bible spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. We are warned not to grieve the Holy Spirit or quench the Holy Spirit. The sin against the Holy Spirit is unpardonable because sin against Him is against the only one who can reveal the Son to us whereby we are saved. Unless a man is born of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. We are convicted by him, born again by him, led by him, filled by him, and sealed by him. The Holy Spirit is God. Is that good? That, that's, that's just what the Bible says. Just a few things the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. I'll give you an illustration, and then we're finished. One time I was sitting on the platform waiting to speak at a church. I was visiting this church uh, as a visiting guest speaker. And I was just worshiping, and I happened to just look out during the service, and my eyes fell on this lady, and the Holy Spirit spoke something to me. 
And so when I got up to speak, everyone was seated, and I said to her, Ma'am, would you stand up a moment? I said, when we were worshiping, uh, the Holy Spirit pointed you out to me. And the Holy Spirit said to me, do you know her past? And when I said that, you should have seen her countenance fall. And she actually put her head down. But listen how the word went on. I said, the Holy Spirit said to me, Robert, do you know her past? And I said, no, Lord, I don't. And the Holy Spirit said, hmm, neither do I. Amen. And she lifted her head back up. And this big smile, and I said to her, you know, ma'am, I know God is omniscient. I know God knows everything. But he told me to tell you that he has chosen not to remember your sins. And it's time for you to choose too. But that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a kind, compassionate, wonderful, sensitive person. And I want him to be your best friend. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you today? Where are you in your relationship with the Holy Spirit? And just be honest in your heart. Are you a little bit afraid of him? Have you maybe seen some bad examples or some misuses or abuses? Has it caused you to pull back a little? Maybe you are where I talked about in a moment where I was in that motel room and the Holy Spirit is convicting you today of your sin. He's really not convicting you of your sin so you feel bad. He's convicting you so you'll believe in Jesus. If you're here today and and you're not sure that when you die you'll go to heaven, we want to pray for you. We want to help you. What what a better time. Many people make a New Year's resolution to, to go to church, and that's a good one. That's a good one. But if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you don't give him your life, nothing will change. Jesus has the power to change your life. And it's the Holy Spirit that leads us to Jesus, that glorifies Jesus. So if you're here today and you need to give your life to God or you need to give your life back to God, it's very, very simple. In just a moment, we're going to stand at both campuses, South Lake and North Richland Hills. And when we stand up, you can just simply stand up and step out and come all at the same time. There'll be other people coming. You won't be the only one. And there'll be leaders here at the front. You just come to one of the leaders. And you say, well, I don't know what to say. Just say something like, I I need to give my life to God or I need to get right with God or I just need you to pray for me. And we'll help you. Or if you have any prayer need, you might be a believer. You might even be a strong believer. But you say, I'm just going through some things. My family's going through some things. I'm going through some things uh, financially. I'm going through some things with my health and my walk with God. If you need prayer, Again, at either campus, South Lake or North Richmond Hills, if you need prayer for any reason at all, when we stand up, you just stand up and step out and come. You do not have to be a member of Gateway Church to come for prayer. We're, we're, we're just believers. We just want to help you in your walk with God. So if you need prayer, when we stand up, you just stand up and step out and come. Holy Spirit, I pray you'll draw every person that has any prayer need In Jesus' name, amen.